If Optimus Prime and Jessica Rabbit had a baby, this website would be it. You're listening to The Fellas. This is not the movie that we deserve, but this is the movie that we need. Hold on, let me move this bike here. All right, guys. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, all there right. you go. Can you hear me a bit better now? I can hear you. Yeah, I was sitting in the corner all melancholy and shit. But that's to be expected. Hey, everybody, you're listening to the fellas. And usually we're a bit more jovial. You know, we try to start the new year off jovial because we usually are jovial because we survived the new year. You know, yeah. it's typically like bombed out version of Baghdad down here with all the bullets flying. But I, I don't know where it is. But after and maybe this is just me something about after we watch star wars yeah i feel like empty like you ever been in a relationship and you've known for a while that it's over and you're just going through the motions and then it gets to a point where you finally announce okay you know what that you know it's over i know it's over it's over let's just go our separate ways you go your separate ways you collect your stuff she moves her shit out of your place and then you just have like one full day to yourself and you just yeah. feel kind of empty i kind of feel like my passion for the movies is gone no I don't know what it is. I just feel fucking empty. I, it's just the exhaustion of, of everything. Oh, you mean doing one review every, like, two weeks when I decide to get off my ass is a bit too much, maybe? No, no, no. It's not that. I guess it's just a lot of the movies were shit. It's January, for crying out loud. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to see this one. Even though I had no reason to want to see this one, I wanted to feel something. So, what we saw today, by the way, guys, uh, we saw 1917. It's a good year. 1917. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? This is a movie about stalwartness and heroism and, and pain and sacrifice and just gung-ho attitude. And at the end of the day, all it did was reinforce the fact that the world we live in today is populated by nothing but giant pussies. Yeah. I'm one of them. No, don't get me wrong. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll talk... Compared to these guys, yeah, I'll toss myself in that category. I, it's kind of silly what I'm about to say, but I was just thinking about this. Mm -hmm. This whole movie was shot like it looks like in one take. There was like oh, yeah. no camera cutting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this is by the way, guys. This is a World War One movie. Yeah, and I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. The whole thing was in one take, and that's part of why it felt like you were really in there. It felt like you were right there. Yeah, it made a huge mm. difference, and it made it a beautiful movie. The the only setback is these guys had to go across like half half of like France and it, it looked like they were going like a block and a quarter or some yeah, shit. Well, it looked like they were walking right around the corner. Well, I was just... The reason why I said I was going to say something silly was because there's a moment where he's walking through the trenches and you see all these guys. They look absolutely bored. And I was thinking maybe someone's going to like Photoshop all these guys using like cell phones. Like imagine 1917, but in today's world with like... All these guys just sitting there. Well, that's to sleep that's with because cell no, that's because you're incorrectly getting what they're feeling. You say, "Oh, they all these guys look bored." No, that's not boredom. That's fatalism. Okay, that's when you realize that when it really, really sinks in that you are not a fucking snowflake. You are not special. No one will know or care when you die. Oh well, it looked like it. What in this movie. what what happens is gonna happen, and all you can do is just say, "Oh well." That's what those guys were looking like. Like they gave up. You know, like the freaking um uh, of the two main characters. One's the optimist and one's the pragmatist. You know what? Let me let me explain the, the plot first. Okay. That'll make more sense. So nineteen seventeen is basically one of those uh a day in the life sort of things yeah. this is just like dunkirk yeah. you know it wasn't it didn't but take better. place over a, a large amount of time it was just a day in the life but, and you're like man but, these guys are going through some shit but dunkirk was fucking sliced and diced and into so many different scenes is like that's because they were jumping back and forth just, yeah you know through time like the whole thing that was happening in dunkirk that was just over the course of like a couple hours yeah but going back and forth through what churchill was going through and shit and all that those were those were days, yeah, weeks, and it was just jumping back and forth. I mean, no, that that that, that Churchill movie was the the Wait, darkest Church, hour. Church, that was the, oh god damn it! Yeah, that was right, that darkest right. hour. Yeah, my yeah. bad, my bad. See, this is Star Wars is doing this, but basically two guys in World War One. Uh, Lance Corporal Blake, 
played by Dean Charles uh, Chapman, and Lance Corporal Schofield, played by uh, George McKay. The whole thing comes down to, hey, I need you to do me a solid. Take this letter over to this guy. Yeah. Sounds easy enough, right? Yeah, just take this letter to this guy. In today's world, yes. In right. In back then's world, no. All the trials and tribulations that it takes just to give, like, a two-sentence message to another guy. Yeah. But that two-sentence message could save the life of, like, 1,600 men, which I was checking some documentaries, by the way. Yeah. And they were like, oh, 1,600 men could die in that assault. And it was like, that was a fucking joke. They, they were, I think it was 16,000 men. No, he said 1,600. Oh, okay. But, like, people were talking about it, like, 1,600 men dying, that would honestly be considered acceptable losses yeah. because of how many people they were fucking losing just over a couple hundred fucking feet. You know, 1,600 men to gain a couple hundred feet would be acceptable losses. Yeah, you don't want to lose them, but they were acting like this was the end-all, be-all. But I digress. Anyway, they get selected to deliver a message from this general saying that, hey, uh, this guy over here, this uh, this colonel, is getting ready to make this, this huge push because he sees that the Germans are retreating, but they're actually just moving back to a stronger position. Any of the men who go over there are going to basically just get fucking eaten up. It's going to be brutal. So he's like, yeah, you need to go and tell the colonel not to launch that attack. I think it was, I think it was Colonel Collins. I think it was played by um, Richard McCabe. I think think that's who it was colonel collins so it's like yeah you got to go over there or a bunch of guys are going to die so get to it and the whole thing is corporal blake is sort of the disillusioned soldier yeah who's seen too much bad shit and corporal uh, showfield is still kind of you know hopeful Ours is not to reason why. It is but to do or die. And, you know, Blake is kind of like, you take that shit and fuck off with that. They show many times. Like, he got um a couple medals for bravery. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I traded it to some French dude for a bottle of wine. He's like, he's, oh, how could you do that? Those are your medals. He's like, it's just some fucking pieces of metal. It won't make up for what I've lost, namely my innocence. You yeah. Know? That's the idea. And also, you mentioned how uh, on shore leave, he doesn't go back to Britain. He, he just stays there because he... He doesn't want to go back to see his family and to see all that that good stuff knowing he has to come back out here to this shit yeah he's like it makes it harder to come back so it's too painful to see all the things i've lost by being here so i'm just gonna stay here well you I, I think you're forgetting one other main character too Who? the background there's so much shit right, going I on you, i see what you did there yeah i was gonna say yeah i was ready to jump up and whoever you're gonna say i was gonna say that person doesn't fucking matter yeah nobody matters except these two but you got me yeah no the the background does matter a lot in fact the background had me quite uncomfortable yeah i mean all the time trench warfare you can never understand just how bad it is i mean and when i say bad i don't mean oh the, the horror smell. you can't the horror no i'm talking about the fucking stench which they bring up the fucking plague and pestilence and my whole thing is when i was a kid you know i fucking ate dirt i rolled around in the mud i yeah. did all that that type of shit everywhere these dudes were going man it's like where do they take a shit where they fucking Not take even that. At one point, a guy gets cut on his hand. Yeah. And all I could think throughout the whole movie, like, yo, you need you need to clean that, bro. You got to clean that out. I say, hey, man. Yo, somebody got some wet naps you, or you something. Got, yeah, if, you if, got if, the alcohol? You got the alcohol? Yeah, yo, I got to, I gotta, you know. If, oxygen if, peroxide? If I cut I my hand that. like that and I don't get that sterilized within the first, like, five minutes, I'm on my way to the fucking hospital. Yeah. I'm like, I'm walking into the emergency room like, yo, you got to look at this. I don't want to lose my hand. You got to do something. And I'm thinking, man, he's going to be trailing through the mud. He's going to be doing this. Dude, and uh, apparently he was trailing through a lot worse shit than I was expecting. Not just that. There's a scene where that same hand that has the cut, he accidentally shoves it into the chest cavity of a fucking corpse. <laughs> I would spend like five minutes staring at my hand. <gasps> everybody. Oh, no. I'd just be staring at my fucking hand. I think hand. everybody in the theater gasped at the same time. Like, oh, God. And it's not the fact that, oh, there's a dead body there. I'm like, no, dude. Your fucking hand went in there. Yeah. I could not scrub. I would have to scrub my hand and fucking lie. And just burn it. <laughs> just burn until I see the white meat. Yeah. That's the only way I would think my hand is clean enough. And then you got them. Other than that, you, you got them them going around walking through all that mud right <sighs> going mud. Through the mud, mud wasn't bad the mud no, was the, the least mud of wasn't mud. bad but the mud's going up to your knees and i'm imagining that to me yeah the moment i get out of that mud i'm taking my my shoes and my socks off and i'm washing my feet yeah 
Like, yo, your fucking feet sitting in mud. That's that's just dirty. But that mud, that's dirty. That mud is lined with a lot of blood, rats, shit, and gore, shit, and shit, and shit. Yes, I just, I couldn't do it. And I'm then, like, look, then, then you're down there, and I'm thinking the whole time I'm going over how much of a pussy I am because I wouldn't be able to do it when they're inside the bunkers for the trench warfare, or whatever. Yeah, and they're just walking around rats everywhere, just mm, eh, whatever. Yeah, just walking around rats as big as my fucking head they're but they're fucking good, yeah. rats going around like you got to live in this bunker with this rat you do you know what i would do if i was in my place in my home and i just happened to see a rat you know what i do i say you know what this house belongs to him now and i get my shit and i leave <laughs> you're like oh just get an exterminator just one rat i don't give a fuck i saw him this house is his i could not live here this place is tainted i'm fucking gone first world problems everybody first world first problems. world problems and thank god i wasn't born in 1917 that's for damn sure oh yeah you would have died like five years later I think that was a life expectancy. Well, uh, of what? Tuberculosis or something? Roll a fucking roulette wheel and find out. Uh, Don't uh, worry, you'd have had six kids. Uh, you know, within your first five years of life. <laughs> but after that, you're on roll, borrowed roll, time. Roll the roulette of what kind of diseases I might have died from if I was born in the 1900. Exactly. What can I say? You take your good with your bad. Do what you want. But then also you get sent off to war to die. That's the one great thing about making it feel like it's a one take. The suspense doesn't let up because you can't feel that you're calm at all. Because if they cut the camera to a different scene, you're able to relax. In this sense, yeah, you know he was happens. in trouble all the time. Constantly. Non-stop. Non-stop. I mean, there was a sense of urgency because Blake's brother, I think, is like a lieutenant. Yeah. Or some shit like that. He's uh, he's, he's uh, one of the the older brother Stark that was oh, killed. Rob. Rob, yeah, he's Rob Stark. Yeah, you, Lieutenant Joseph Blake. You know, there's anxiety that you have to get there as fast as possible. You got to hurry up. You got to make it happen. Yeah. You know? Because he doesn't want his brother to get killed. And the one thing I liked about it is anybody that you would recognize, like Mark Strong or fucking uh, Cumberbatch, uh, anybody else that you would recognize that is a kind of famous actor, they well, kind of let these no-name guys take care of it. That's good because you can focus on their acting instead of saying, hey, I wonder what this famous guy is going to say next. And by the way, I will point out, everyone's acting was superb because it, everyone just felt like I am over this shit. You know, every, everyone was melancholy. Yeah. There was no, we're the good guys, we're going to make it happen. Ah, fucking Germans will push these fucking animals back where they belong. They look tired, Everybody man. just looked like, I am fucking done with this. <laughs> the Germans, the British, everyone was just like, I just want this shit. To end, I just want it to be fucking over with. And, and the thing is, just like I man, loved it. Um, this is war, and there's moments where, like, look, man, my enemy's there. Do I want to chase him down, or you know, fuck, man? Well, I that was that was some of the thing that kind of bothered me a little bit because there were some instances. There's that scene in the city where, like, dude, there's nobody in command. It's just me and somebody else. If I see, like, look, man, just fucking go. I'm, yeah, I'm that's that kind of got me. I'm like, yo, we're running through the city, shooting wildly and chasing after one, one guy. guy. Yeah, I'm like, dude, the city is ours. It's been bombed to rubble. Fucking let him go. Yeah. If I bump into him, I'll take him. But I, ain't, I'm not running for this. I'm not. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting out of breath. I'm fucking tired. Dude. Just fucking let him go. I like his journey, but there's certain scenes, even when he met that sniper, the sniper could have just let him go. But I guess they wanted to fortify, to retreat, leave a couple of guys there to take out one or two guys just to fortify another position. Well, what would have made sense to me, the whole thing with that sniper, wasn't so much the sniper letting him go. It, I mean, you're in an elevated position. You can see a guy. Fuck, let me take a couple pot shots at him. I don't have to run around. No, what got me was him trying to go in there to find and kill that sniper. Yeah. Because it's like... Like, I don't know what's in that building. There can be like 20 guys in there. That's true. I, I have an important mission, which is to deliver this message. I'm not going to be playing hero. I'm not chasing down no fucking body. I would have had him run close to the house so the sniper can't see him because he's too close to the house. And then I had him run off in the opposite direction. That's all you got to do. There's moments where like I'd be taking a shit. But one thing they do show here that's actually really awesome is mm -hmm. they show the human condition where it's fucking fight or flight. Oh, yeah. Fucking run. Yep. Run, 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 run. They should have had. Should've that uh, song uh, Beautiful Run or something yeah. and the thing is you know this guy's gonna be a big action star George McKay because oh, if, yeah. he, if he's in a movie and all you're doing is running that's what I call the Will Smith effect that motherfucker runs in every movie I think of course the, the very last scene 
Yeah. Was the most, most dramatic one. Like, it was intense. It was like, dude, the colonel's right there. He is right there, and they're already starting the advance. All I got to do is get to him. He's like fucking 100 feet away. Yeah. And at that point, he is so desperate. He's like, you, I came all this way and still failed yeah. because they're already right. launching the attack. He's like, fuck it. He jumps onto the fucking battlefield and runs across the battlefield. And that's kind of when your adrenaline's really pumping because honestly, I thought they were going to just get the letter and be like, ah, oh, fuck it, man. We already started. Yeah. <laughs> just have them go through with it and everyone dies. I'm still very pleased with the ending because at the ending, it's like you expect, oh, he's going to get a medal for his heroism or something. It's like, no, it's like he gives a guy a litter. <sighs> All right, fuck it. Call off the attack. He tells the guy, yeah, go over to the mess hall, get something to eat and get the fuck out of my face. And that's it. Job well yeah, done. I thought so, that too. That was I thought, it. I thought he was going to go, oh, man, you saved all these guys. Good you're gonna, job. You're, you're going to go back get, home to the line. No. You're going to get another useless medal or this and that. He's like, you ain't get shit. You're just a fucking, make no mistake, what you did was different. Difficult, but you're still nothing more than a glorified messenger. Oh my god! Fucking go sit down somewhere. You're I done for the day. I didn't think about. I didn't think about how brilliant this ending was. Oh, that ending! I I did the moment I saw it. No. And then as soon as the credits started rolling, I'm like, well, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit. You know what's that's rough? You know it's What was the first shot of the movie? What gunshot? No. What was the first shot oh, in the movie? Oh, when it uh, started? them them sleeping. Where was that guy? Where was he? They were right next to each other. They were just like leaning up on a tree and they were sleeping. And then how did and it then finish? Fucking, uh, how did it finish? Oh, did he did he lean on the tree and yeah. go back to? Oh yeah. After he spoke to this dude's brother, yeah, he gave him his his rings and shit, all the stuff he got off him. He went to a tree and he sat down. And he just stared off into nothing and probably went back to sleep. Yeah, that's pretty fucking brilliant. I pick up and then he off, cut, he started complaining. He's like, "Why'd you pick me for this mission?" He's like, "I don't know, freaking." He's like, "I thought it was gonna be something easy." I shit, I know you. You were right next to me. I, I thought he was gonna have us fucking dig a latrine or some shit. I don't know. And he just said, to, you, you, I got tossed into this shit because of you. And just to think about what one day is like in this war. Yeah. And that's all this think, was, was about 24 right. hours. Yeah. It was just 24 hours of him trying to get to the front lines. And it's, it's fucking terrible, dude. <laughs> And you get no thanks. No. You get nothing. That's what life was like back then. Man. And now that we've had men like that who had to do that horrible, horrendous shit for us. Yeah. So that we can have this future. And what do we have? Safe spaces. Fucking safe spaces and six-year-old boys twerking, saying that they're girls. Oh, my God. And saying, saying my name is Desmond the Amazing and shit. (sighs) I want I want the guys from this 1917 movie be like, yeah, look at this. Yeah, look look at England now. I want them to see that and say, you know what? Fuck it. Let the Germans have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm dying for this. Yeah. No. When when life is too easy and too simple, you end up with degeneracy, folks. There you go. I think Rob Stark, I can't even remember this actor's name. Mm-hmm. The, the the two minutes he was in this movie, man, how he knows how to turn feelings from well, it being was happy good because to being destroyed. Because you could could see there were no tears no but you could clearly see the conflict in his he eyes he was holding like, that shit back like you're a man so you don't cry you need to be tough because you know if you can't handle this who's gonna handle it for you yeah you have to go home to your mother and explain to her how her son died and you need to be strong because she won't be she's gonna need you so he just sits there and he just like so how did he die he died like a hero you know it wasn't painful and this and that and you'll see him stop looking at the guy and just look off to the side a bit Mm -hmm. and he turns back to him and look at him some more it's like he's trying to hold it together it's like it's it's good it's good it's like i i felt for the dude i I felt i felt horrible and i was thinking if i were there then just like if i saw that dude right now after telling him that and seeing how he responded i just nod my head and say sorry for your loss and i walk off the sad don't talk to him don't try to comfort him you let him take care of that maybe go maybe he'll go somewhere private and cry a little bit that's fine yeah. You, you go off to the side, you cry a little bit, you come back. It's fine. You're a man. I just think that there's no way these two would have been able to survive this mission. One of them had to go because they were dealing with way too much shit. There was just too many obstacles. Well, yeah, it's certain parts in the movie. Absolutely. One of them, it was inevitable. One of them would have had yeah. to die. Just that sniper scene, yeah. one of them would have died. Them going through that yeah. bombed out city, what? no way both of them would have made that. No. 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 One of them would have had to have died. Yeah. And then that would have risked the other one from dying. I think the most disgusting part of this movie when the guy was floating through the river of bodies, mm-hmm. he just had to climb over bodies just to get to shore. Which again, is like, oh, God. Again, and they're all bloated. Like, 
Again, You're all bloated again, and busted. You know, again, I'm looking at something like that. Like, yeah, I ain't going in there. If I see a body of water Man, with just with just some weird looking algae, I'm like, I ain't going in there. No, a dirty pool. Nah, I ain't going in that shit. Nah, yeah, it's this, fucking dirty. It's a fucking dirty pool. And nah, it's this just is getting just... in this dude's mouth. He's swallowing oh, some of that. God. Man. I almost started to. Uh, uh, <laughs> And just just looking at him getting this shit in his mouth, like no. Uh, hopefully these guys got shots, right? Yeah, for whatever good the shots are gonna be. I mean, back then, a lot of times you just were like, man, fuck it. The cure is worse than the disease. I'll just fucking get that fetid shit in my system. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll have the squirts for a couple of days, but I'll get over. Oh my god! Imagine, yeah, imagine in that body in your pee hole. Oh yeah, that's why I say I'll just go ahead and get the squirts for a couple of days. Oh, Don't worry god. about it. It'll be fine. And everybody's just there. And the thing is, all these dudes. Are just fucking just like whatever man they're just dejected dude it's like i just i just want to get through it's rolling day. the dice every day hopefully you don't roll a, a fucking one and just perish i mean that's literally what it felt like it's like mm-hmm. fuck you live an extra day thank god that's about it and that's it yeah i mean what what more can be said about it i mean i i really honestly guys i really should be a little bit more more jazzed up and adamant about this but uh hopefully hopefully next week I'll have a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah. juice because Star Wars just kind of took it out of me. Like, no, we we ate t- Star Wars up. I mean, well, we, we ate it up, but no matter how much you eat it up, it's kind of like like hate fucking is the only way you can communicate anymore. Oh yeah, well, you yeah. know, a lot of people are saying, a lot of people are online saying, "Oh man, it's like the best thing that ties everything together." I'm like, man, how, how the fuck does it do that? No, man? there's so much conspiracy going on. They're saying how it was actually a lot better, but Disney undid uh, freaking JJ Abrams' shit and they edited it in a, a way that he wasn't supposed to do. Funny enough, I heard rumors is like J.J. Abrams was so thoroughly pissed that he was like, he ain't going to do any more Disney shit because he was so upset. With Good. Because it's like, from what, what the rumors say, they didn't even fucking consult him. He didn't know that they took out, imagine, you direct this whole thing. So, okay, this is how it's going to be. I've directed it. This is my magnum opus. I had to constantly redo it, but I finally did it the way they wanted it to be, while at the same time, making it workable. It's not a complete complete piece of garbage and then like the day before it comes out you look at the theatrical release and you're like the fuck is all this so you tell me there's like out, another movie then yeah holy shit i want to see they that. they completely because there was all like the whole romance thing between um uh finn and ray yeah that that wasn't actually a romance thing finn has force abilities that's what it was supposed to be and he was trying to find a way to awkwardly tell ray that he can he's starting to do strange shit like there like there's a certain time was like he's trying to get like a, a wrench or a screwdriver or something he's just reaching out his hand and it's like moving a little bit shaking he's like what the hell and it's like there's a scene where uh when ray dies yeah they do show this was in the movie he's like poe just like no nah, not poe but finn just like stops and it's like ray it's like what's going on i can feel it you know ray is dying or some shit like that whatever yeah. but he he doesn't he's just reacting to shit he doesn't know how to actively do anything and that was supposed to explain how he was able to actually use a lightsaber in the first one not use it well yeah but your average person would cut off their fucking limbs because it's got no counterweight to it yeah imagine trying to use a flashlight like a weapon You'd slice through your arm and not even fucking know it. That's why, like, people can't fucking use lightsabers. Yeah. But J.J. Abrams, it wasn't going to come out and have him saving the day using the Force. Well, he kind of did. They it was just going to have a feeling. Yeah, they were just going to set up that he, you know, here's something for the future that you may be able to do. And it also fixes some plot holes. Like, when they sunk into the quicksand. Yeah. And he's like, before he dies, like, Ray, I have to tell you something. And he's like, I, and then he went under, and you was like, oh, he's going to say, I love you. He was going to say, I can use the force. That's what he was going to say before they died. Oh. And it's like, imagine you doing all this dumb shit that your boss told you to do, but you still manage to do it in a way that will save your product. And at the last minute, you go in there and you see he just haphazardly and ham-fistedly rearranged your shit to do something else with it. Oh. Like, how would you feel? Like, happens to why, me why, why the fuck am I even here? Why don't you just fucking do it? Yeah. Why don't you do it? 
I spent all day trying to fix this shit at the last minute with you constantly making changes, yet I still managed to make something decent. Mm -hmm. And then you just come in, yeah, just move this here, 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 here. I'm like, you can't just do it that way. That's the committee shit, man. You have to make it feasible. You have to make it work. You don't just ham-fistedly change shit. And now, this looks like fucking garbage. Mm -hmm. It looks like ass. Fucking scenes don't make sense. You're jumping from point to point. Searching rushing. for the MacGuffin. Everything is fucking handed to you. This is fucking stupid. And it looks like shit now. And they were saying he's just super pissed that in all of his years as a director, he's never had someone go behind him and do some shit like that. And don't even give him the goddamn common courtesy to say, hey, look, we need to make these changes. Look over these changes we're making. No, we're just going to do it and put the shit out there. So that he means like, Kathleen this is Kennedy unbelievable. and uh, Bob Iger are the ones that... Ain't, ain't shit going to happen to Bob Iger. He's well, made, he's retiring. He's, he's out. Yeah, but either way, he's made Disney fucking bucket loads of money, so he's fine. But Kathleen Kennedy is going to be sucking dicks in an alley somewhere. Oh. I mean, well, she's rich. <laughs> But, I mean, she is not going to be handed the reins of anything coming close to the value of this ever again. Yeah, yeah she can't she be trusted. Sing she single-handedly took a goose with a golden egg. This IP was just miraculous. And she did so much damage to it that this intellectual property will never recover. have the value. You know, it'll, re it'll recover. It will never have the value that they paid for it. Never again. Because anything dealing with Star Wars from here on out that you go into, you're going to go into with not optimism, not optimism, not cautious optimism, but cautious weariness. And that's bad. Uh, yeah, actually, that you're right. You're I'm kind of worried. I'm you're worried expecting it to be bad, and you're trying to see how bad it's going to be. From something that people were just busting nuts for, to people coming in just to see how quite how bad it's going to be. That's what we went into. Yeah. Man, you just how bad fucked this up be? this IP. You just fucked it up. But now they're handing it off to uh, your boy who's in charge of the Marvel shit. Uh, what's his face? Kevin Feige. He's, they're going to give Star Wars to him. He wanted that shit badly. Hell yeah, he wanted that fucking shit. He wanted that shit so bad. They're, I'm pretty sure they're going to give it to him. Well, Kennedy's problem was she was like, oh, the IP will just print money. There's nothing we really have to do. But since it's going to print money anyway, I'm going to shoehorn in all this bullshit. And she killed it. Yeah. She fucking killed it. It was a gem. How the hell did we go from talking about this great movie, 1917, to, to right being sucked right back into fucking Star Wars? Again? I know how we got here. It's because all those men in the trenches were the freaking Star Wars fans. And that's how we felt. We were abused. Well, we were battered. Well, I, I didn't... We were fighting a fucking war against... Well, I didn't mean, like, in an analytical sort of way. I just meant we were supposed to be reviewing this movie, and now we're back to you fucking see all the fans, Star Wars you again. See, you see the Germans represent the Disney corporatism... Oh, Jesus ...gunning Christ. down the, the Star Wars, the diehard Star Wars fans. And just like in that battle, that final battle where they were shooting those... The artillery was gunning down those brave British souls. And those guys that were falling, they were the Star Wars fans. Yep. Gunning down their hopes and dreams to see something awesome. What's that clip from Billy Madison? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Through your rambling analogy, you never once made anything coming close to a coherent structure. And we are dumber for having heard you. I award you no points and may God have mercy on you. That's that's what that was the equivalent of. Let's let's go ahead and rate this. This movie, honestly, I'm sorry for not boosting it up a bit more, guys. This movie was absolutely phenomenal. And my thing is, I could say it's good, but the cinematography put it completely over the edge. It's, it's that that level. one that one camera shot. Throughout the whole thing, and also the acting, phenomenal. But the most important thing, just like this was great and Dunkirk was great, unlike Dunkirk, I would see this a second time. I, uh, I would see this yeah. a second, because I bet you there's things I, I could notice you, that I didn't, didn't see notice. before. Yeah. It just feels good. I love these movies that are just like a day in the in life. life. Like Dread. Yeah, like the I New love that Dread, movie. Just a day in the life. Nothing big, no nothing super. Oh, I'm gonna take down this giant crime syndicate, and I'm gonna put the city on the path to peace. No, this is just an average day for him. What does he do when he's done? Put my helmet on. All right, let's go back out. Yeah, the, our shift isn't over yet, and I love that sort of thing. For that, I'll give this a full price. Wow. That's, I remember I didn't give Dunkirk a full price because as good as it was, 
I was like, I wouldn't really watch, watch it twice. Again. Yeah, I will watch this at least two more times. This, I'll give this a full price. This movie made me feel a lot. I felt like shit leaving this movie. I, it's really weird. Like I had that gut disgust and feeling about where well, I was. It's, it's weird. I, I felt, felt I felt empty. I felt coming, very well. Here's the thing. I felt mm-hmm. empty coming to see the movie. Yeah. And I felt full of self-loathing when I left the movie. I felt like shit. <laughs> it's like, what have you movie? done with your fucking life? <laughs> fucking sitting here complaining because the movie you paid 18 bucks to see wasn't quite up to your liking. And also, the soda at the concession stand was warm. <laughs> this motherfucker was reaching into corpses and getting his nuts blown off. <laughs> Not by choice. <laughs> for, for, for nothing at all. For a tin fucking piece of metal and an attaboy and a pat on the back. Yeah, not even a thank you. Just like, hey. Get back to work. Get back to work. Yeah, so I just said, all right. I got the letter now. Fuck out of here. That's that's about it. (laughs) And lucky if you get fucking bread or even water. Mm -hmm. That's tasty. No, you're going to get like fucking cardboard box, whatever is available. So what are you going to give it? I'm going to give this... A, I want it inside me. Okay, that's fair. Because, fuck, man, this made, movie made me feel more than I wanted to. I felt like shit leaving this this movie. I, I felt wondering, I was like, he's going to go home? Will he make it? Is mm-hmm. he going to survive? I genuinely... I had, no, what you're trying to say is it comes down to one simple sentence, Ray. You genuinely gave a fuck. Yeah. When was the last time you watched a movie and genuinely gave anything coming close to a shit about the protagonist. I mean, you want to see how the movie's going to yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. But you're not like, this guy dies, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. You know, I haven't felt that way in fucking years. You know, I just was wondering. And the wondering. movie made you give a shit. Yeah. I mean, I felt bad, man. I felt bad when his partner died. I'm not going to say which one. But I, I I felt bad when his partner died. I'm like, man, I thought they were going to make it all the way. Yeah, and it, like- his partner died in what felt like really early. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like the first quarter of the movie. Yeah. Dead. Yeah, it did feel like the first yeah, quarter. Yeah, it's like, nah, he's not going to die. He's not going to die. Fucking seriously? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's fucking dead? He's fucking Damn. dead. Yeah, and he's like, ah, oh, life, shit. Life was cheap. Real cheap. That's, that's the whole point. Life was cheap. And for him to try to be a decent person in the middle of a war. That's what that gets you. Yeah, that's what that gets you. I'm not going to say what it is, what happens to him, but that's what gets you. You're in war, fuck it, man. I would have just said, let that motherfucker burn, but, you know. So you're going to give it, and I want it inside of me, yeah. and I give it a very high full price. I think what's fair, a, a, a low, I want it inside of me. Okay. So this this movie ends with an it's I want it inside of me. The, and also take your young teenagers who constantly complain about bullshit to go see this. Yeah. Only because this is what people had to endure. Yeah, and then once the movie is done, give them a fucking haircut. Yeah. And send them out. Fucking, cut that fucking hair. I was astonished so that don't how... Don't come back until you make something of yourself. I was astonished how those helmets stood on their heads. Uh, but they did have straps. Yeah, they had straps, but it's like, shit. I was they didn't sure. put them on most of the time, but, you know. Also, those those helmets weren't made of, of tough polymer uh, material like ours. That was fucking metal. Those helmets were heavy as shit. Yeah, everything they were wearing looked heavy as shit. Yeah, they would have really had to work for those fucking helmets <laughs> to come off. That's like some some bad spinal problem type shit. Yeah, no. Those helmets were heavy. They weren't coming off by accident. No, well, they got blown off. See, well, now, you, now you've gone and made me shit. sad again. Oh. Hit the hit the music. All right, don't forget to visit us on our website at g2ta.net. Got to talk about, talk about it. com, and don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube page, you guys. Jeez, man. Murder, death, kill, as they say. Murder, death, kill. You know, it never occurred to me, with all the shit that was going on, really, what was to stop that dude from just being like, fuck this, and then just walk off into the French countryside? They never would have found him. That's true, actually. You could have just been like, once he dropped that... That dude died. Yeah, once he dropped that letter off, you'd be like, yeah, go to the mess hall, get something to eat, and... Rest. I would have gone giving his brother his shit, and I would have just fucking walked the fuck off. You know what's they funny? Never would have saw me again. You know what's funny? Everybody saying you ain't gonna make it, man. Yeah. I mean, everybody that he bumped into is like, you're not gonna make it there. And what's worse with his with his pragmatic attitude, he would have agreed with him. But, yeah. Yeah, but he made it. So, shit. There is hope. Yeah, there is hope for us all. <laughs>